Hey guys, it's Tom at Richfield Blacktop and Concrete. Just talking about the tools you might need for the pouring of the concrete. Uh, number one, you're going to need concrete mix. Our super exterior mix from Aggregate Industries. And you're going to need to measure the driveway. And once you get that measurement, you can just divide that by 80 square feet. And that will tell you how many yards of concrete you need. Aggregate Industries can also help you um, with that as far as telling you how much you need. I always order an extra half yard of concrete on top of what you need. Uh, concrete rakes, bull float, the edger, the mag float, a screeder, uh, some 2x4s for uh, screeding it, usually a 10 footer, a couple of them would be helpful. Uh, your, your finishing broom, a, a sprayer to put your um, cure agent in, some pads which you can buy uh, at Menards, they're just the two inch rigid insulation that you can cut up into two by two foot sections. You'll need a bucket of cure agent which you can buy at Agar Industries as well. We are now um, getting ready to pour the concrete and we use a great product, it's Super Exterior Mix from Agar Industries. It uses Class A aggregate, which doesn't rock pop as much as a lot of the other aggregates on the market out there. So we're going to be pouring that concrete right into the garage floor area. That's where we start. You'll want to make sure that you'll have you know, concrete boots, get all your rakes ready, have your bull float ready, your finishing tools like an edger, your mag float, your screeder, um, have your, your finishing broom ready to go. You want to have all your stuff right there within hand's reach because once the concrete starts coming it needs to be babysat. So here we are, we're already starting to, uh, as it comes in, we just right away we just starting to flatten that out. Um, we use our mags and just uh, and our rakes, as you can see there, we're just kind of raking that to a little bit above the surface that you want. You don't want it right at the surface because you're going to start to rake that and screed it and you're going to need a little bit of extra concrete there. So you want to be maybe a quarter to a half above where you're at and you can see how it's nice to have a front loading truck those are kind of hard to get sometimes but the front loading truck is almost like an extra man you know they the driver will actually put the concrete in place for you which is really nice so if you can you know, request a front loading truck that that's really um, a nice way to go especially when you're doing it at home by yourself so we're just kind of uh, Screeding, this is called screeding. We've got our screed board. We're going to find that pin um, that you saw us do earlier, and we're going to put the screed on that pin, and we're going to kind of create a, a flat area in that where that pin is, and then we're going to use our screed from the form over to that pin. And that's what you're kind of seeing there now. You see that area between the screeds there? It's like a foot a foot gap. That's where our pins are, and uh, we, were, we found those. And you can see now Sammy's starting to... Uh, use his bowl float there and kind of flatten everything out and get rid of all the imperfections from the screening process. And there's some sometimes it'll create some areas where there's a little bit of a gap and they'll just take some concrete and and just take a shovel full and just put in there. And you can see just going back and forth with the with the bowl float, getting all the imperfections out. You see here they're pulling that rebar up. That's important too that when the rebar is laid down that you don't just pour over the top of it. You want to pull that up into the bottom third to half of the concrete. You want to pull it up too high. If you pull it up uh, too high into the top, then you're going to have bleed through, rust, rust bleed through. So, uh, see our expansion joint there, up against the curb, and you want to put that up against the sidewalk and up up, up against the garage floor, and get that concrete up against it so. It, you don't get any gaps. If you do get a gap, it's okay. You can just caulk that in with some concrete caulk. Not a big deal. It's just you want to have a nice tight fit finish there. Basically, after you get done bowl floating it, you want to just let it rest for about 10 minutes. Just uh, just allow some of the moisture and the water in the concrete to come to the surface um, so you don't lock that water in. If you lock the water in, you can get some peeling uh, through a winter because then the, the water freezes and you get uh, some peeling of Okay, now we're starting to edge the driveway with our edger because if we don't edge it and you pull the forms off, you're going to have just a sharp kind of crumply edge along there. We want a nice kind of curved, consistent edge along, along all, all around the driveway, you know, from the curb up to the garage and on both sides. 
All right, so you can see that they're finishing that off. And now we're measuring for the right away area. That was a six inch pour versus a four inch pour. So we're gonna just put a hand cut across here. Now there's a couple different ways you could put cuts in. You can hand cut it in or you can saw cut it the next day. We're gonna hand cut this in so we because we, we know exactly where that six inches is. So we hand cut that in across there and that's where the six inch and the four inch pour met. So they use the the uh, string line to just snap that. Sometimes the concrete, you may have to get out there to repair a divot or sometimes you push down on the concrete and you gotta get out there and work on it. I would have some two inch styrofoam, uh, have like maybe six or, or eight of them on hand. So you can just put those out on the concrete and then you can kneel out on these uh, form boards. And once you get it to where it's the way you like it, you put a nice broom coat finish on it. And that's what they're doing right now. They're putting it on there and they're bringing the broom across the driveway. And the reason for this is that so you have some traction. If you were not, if you didn't do this, it would be very slippery, especially when it got wet or in the winter, a little moisture on there would be very slick. A couple buckets next to the driveway are nice just to clean your tools. Just have those ready to go though before so you're not scrambling later. Got it all broomed now, and now we're going to hit it with uh, what's called a cure agent. The cure agent locks the moisture in the concrete, and the concrete over a 30-day period loses hydration, and we want to lock that moisture in so it comes out slowly. If it comes out too quick, you get shrinkage, a lot of shrinkage cracks.